it's a place to bring people together to learn about art, but it's also a place to commune. I am so proud to live in a community that has an art center like this. You know that it has a draw for many different people, whether it's children taking classes or older generations coming together for events and Tai Chi classes and you know rumba lessons and things like that. It's just a delight. You can do anything here. And it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, you can always have a good time. This is Pegaso, and I made it in uh, Sylvia's Pegaso class, and we read a book called When Pegaso Met Matisse. The classes were so varied and affordable, and for different age ranges, it was kind of like the ideal because you could have access to all of the arts, but it wasn't a very pretentious feeling. It was very welcoming. I became familiar with the center in like 2009, and it wasn't until 2019 that I took my first class. <laughs> it really just kind of expands your horizons. It really changed me because it opened me up to a bunch of different classes and mediums and allowed me to explore like oil painting for a really low cost for such an expensive medium to work with. Creating something, learning something, challenging myself, uh, those are all things that I get from art. It almost gives your, your life a, a different focus after you get retired and you know you can really just create a way and have a community of people to uh, create with and grow with. Why do people write? Sometimes it's because it's students or teachers that are given them an assignment. Other times it's because writers have inspiration. It was rock and roll. Pure raw, unadulterated soul with a capital S-O-U-L. The boy stood there, googly-eyed and stupefied. The old man chuckled and lived away. So I've kept in touch with a lot of the students that I've had in the past through Facebook. And when I was asked to do this interview, I, I touched base with one in particular who I had remembered had won an award through the writing contest. And who I also know is just finishing up her master's in fine arts through Hamlin University, and her master's is in creative writing. And I asked her what it meant for her to be recognized through the contest, and, and she said that she never felt like she was a very good writer, and that being a part of the competition gave her a voice, and it showed her that her writing was important, and that people found it valuable, and that that really inspired her to go on and continue writing. And I think for them to know that people are looking at and appreciating their artwork is just an amazing opportunity. You know, everyone's going through their own artistic journey and nobody's at the same, you know, level. We're not in competition. We're just kind of encouraging each other and it's kind of my way to ground myself. I have some pretty bad anxiety and I went through a deep bout of depression a few years back and art was kind of my way of staying in reality and not letting it consume me. It was my way to keep myself grounded and here. The instructors are always very cognizant that you might not have ever done this before and will always give you plenty of help if you need it. And I think people get excited about getting off of their computers nowadays and using their hands again and getting messy. You know, there's joy in that. Yeah, they want to make, they just want to make stuff. I think it's just because they have such a wide diversity of different things you can try. Um, pottery, I've always wanted to do the pottery on the wheel. I've worked with clay in the past, but never on the wheel. So being able to do that for a month was really cool. So this is a red Russian lace necklace um, that I made in one of the classes here. Um, I actually entered this one in the, my uh, 4-H County Fair, and I took it to the state fair. Um, and I received purple ribbon, a grand champion on it. So kind of like my pride and joy, this one. <laughs> Coming here, it's been 
a respite. It's been a place where it's calm. I can just focus on creating something. Sometimes it turns out, sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's just that creative process that I get to enjoy. Um, I know actually our family has had some financial difficulties this year. And so we, I believe, have all had um, or have made use of scholarships to take most of the classes this year. And that's been a really um, exciting experience. And so this, the, don the donations that are made um, allow people like our family to try new things and to keep doing the things that we love. And so for me, it's a matter of nurturing the spirit, which will allow me to then make more of an impact in the world. And so supporting the opportunity for people to engage in creativity and community is what is going to empower them to be able to then do better in their lives and make a difference in that way. It's important to give financially to the organizations that you believe in and your family is involved in and make the community a better, stronger place. And we certainly give. Craig and I give every year. It, this is a really valuable part of our, of, our, um, of our lives here. We're so happy to have such a quality art center in our neighborhood.